show in a second. Well, good morning. We're going to get started. They told me I was late, and uh, that, that's terrible. I'm late. So, how's everybody doing? Good. So, so, so you know. Um, what you've got to do here when you sit, I put all the chairs back, and well, what you need to do as you're coming in is you need to sit with your circle, or you've got a social distance from uh, everyone else. And so, um, you know, like you've got to, I mean, if there's a cluster in the sense of some folk, um, that you've been hanging out together. That's a little different, families and that. But really, uh, now with these guidelines that just come out, it don't affect us yet, amen? But we were just talking about whether we're allowed to have 50 or 30, and we can social distance good here with about 30 people, right? And, and so because of the, because we've already did the dynamics and, and spread them out, so. But anyway, we all figured that out as we're going along, and um, I'm glad that you're here, and I don't want to focus, uh, I'm always sort of leaning toward, or people get me to lean to focus on the virus, guys, like, let's just focus on Jesus, and we got to live with this. We all know the rules, right? So let's just worship the Lord. I don't know how you can do that. Let's, let's just exalt and magnify his name and let's enjoy his presence. Let's enjoy family by getting out to church, right? And being part of a body of believers, amen? So let me just say, as we start, we should, we're probably live now, so we welcome our group live and we welcome you in house and uh, I'm going to get the team to come and we're going to worship the Lord. We're going to we're going to focus our attention on him this morning and um, listen I know you've got to wear your mask you know that uh, but I'd encourage you however you can and, and desire worship the Lord with your entire heart. Amen. God bless you this morning. And uh, I'm going to get Melanie to open in prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this beautiful morning, God. And we just pray that you would um, allow us to enter into a time of worship and praise with you, God. And that you would just bring us closer to you as your children. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys could stand with us. Steve's back on drums, so that's Al and Luke's here. He thought first service was 8.45, so we walked in in the middle, but it's better late than never, so. <laughs> Oh, 
you for a minute or so. And um, I, uh, we're having some little bit of trouble with sound, so if you see me running back and forth, I'm, um, I'm trying to make me sound better. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Now, it's uh, that live feed and all that fun stuff where you come back. I think when we were away, the cleaner chewed the wires. <laughs> I'm just joking, Mark. But anyway, we seem to have a, be having a wire problem, but you'd never figure it out this late in the game. But listen, we want to welcome you here and online. And um, we're just thankful that, that we can have church and uh, that we can continue to worship the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. You're not very convincing. If I was a sinner, I'd still be a sinner with you guys. Right? Amen. We're here to worship the Lord. Amen? Amen. That's a little man, man. We at least need to. The, the last ball game I was at, which was probably like a ball game 20 years ago. But anyway, they got loud there. There's nothing wrong with getting loud. Let me just say a few things to start. Uh, you're going to see some Bible study. One come up, and we're going to start advertising uh, some more. I don't know what's going to take place as we move forward, and uh, neither do anybody else on the planet, it seems like. And um, I know that uh, some poor girl yesterday had a wedding that was scheduled for over 100 people outside. And because of some of the guidelines, had to switch everything in a quite a hurry. And, and so uh, I'm not sure it's hitting us hard sometimes. And uh, uh, Jake and I were talking earlier, and it's kind of nice that the businesses are not getting hammered again so quick. And, and so, but uh, still, uh, these are like, I don't know. And, uh, but anyway, I want to encourage you. We're hopefully going to launch some groups of probably 10 or less where we can get you part of a group, whether you just meet every week or what, but it might be good um, that we would be able to have some people that we can connect with. So we're starting to work on that. So at least uh, within some form of a, of a circle, you could be encouraged and built up and all that stuff. And uh, I don't know if they're going to cut us back again and uh, whether we can meet, but I'll tell you one thing, that God still sits on the throne. And although the wrong might seem awful strong, God still rules, right? And he's still God. And uh, not to take away from anything or anybody, it is essential that you would worship and bring glory to God. By no comparison at all to anything, right? But I, I do believe that we need to worship the Lord. And um, we can't let anything like this crush us because this is so minor in the sense of connected with the church and persecution. There, there are days coming that will be more trying, so let me encourage you to press on and press forward. And if you're going to fall, if you are going to fall, I would encourage you to fall forward, right? It's kind of nice, right? Rather than, uh, so entrust the Lord for this, amen? So I want to welcome, the, there's a few visitors with us today, we want to welcome you. I know that Patrick and his family and he, he, uh, they've been coming out now for a few weeks. Patrick, are you shy like me? I, I am very shy. Okay, good. Could you just stand up and introduce your family to us? I said shy like me. So listen, just introduce your family. You've been out for a few services. And tell us what brings you in our area. Well, we, we started coming here because it's beautiful summer days. So we came to the outside services and quite liked it. Um, we're from Ottawa, so we're quite a drive here, but it's nice to, nice to come out here. This is my lovely wife, Karen, and my daughter, Violet, and I'm Patrick, and nice to meet you all. Good. Nice to have you with us. And I'll try not to center you, but you've been here a few Sundays, and we don't get a chance to chat and connect and all that stuff, but, uh, but anyway, uh, I'm, we're glad that you're here. Amen? Amen. So uh, you're going to see Janice got a Bible study up there. Guys, there's not much else happening right now. We're going to meet regularly from this in. You're going to notice all the chairs in. Like I've said, I, I would encourage you to keep in your circle social distance. And um, 
we'll just uh, we just keep moving uh, forward. Denise, did you want to talk a little bit about your march coming up? We don't know if it's going to happen, but I'll give you a shot at that one. So I'm working on my uh, Walk for Freedom for the fall, uh, like I do every year, for uh, bringing awareness to uh, women and girls that are rescued from human trafficking. And uh, because of such a different, you know, world that we live in, kind of, I've had to kind of go through the health unit. I'm still waiting on my permit from the town, but we're trying to change it up a bit this year. So John Tiger has given me uh, the goal ahead, the green light to leave from their location because of that south side of the building, and we're looking at having vendors in there. So as long as we can do it in a way that we're socially distanced and everything, we'll be leaving from there and walking down like our normal route, but we're just leaving from a different location. It will cost money to have a table, and then you can sell your wares. So uh, yeah, so we're hoping to raise $10,000. Not being serious, just $10,000 for <laughs> the home that we're going to open in Prescott area for girls that are rescued. Good. Good. So guys, at this stage, we're not taking an offering. you got to, at some point, you're going to go back there in a little while and get a communion cup. Uh, but um, you can drop your offering in. We, we encourage you and thank you for continuing to give and to dive uh, to Seaway. And so, uh, but anyway, you can do that in a little while. We're going to do some worship together. I'm going to get you to stand and let's just worship the Lord together. This one's a new one. I know we never sing new songs, but uh, <laughs> it's uh, just about, you know, when you're going through rough times, trials, or after you've gone through them, you can look back and say, there's was Jesus. You know, like, oftentimes we think we're alone or it seems so, you know, dark, but you'll look back and be like, okay, God was there then and there and then. And they, this song, yeah, it really touches me. I don't know. We've been through a lot in the past five years or so, so it, it, you could look back and say, God was there, 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 you know, so just uh, encourage you to worship the Lord.
great are you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Great pray for Lacey this morning. Lacey got some stuff going on in her family and, and she needs our prayers. And so um, we need to continue to pray for John and Barb. Right? We do. They, uh, they, they need our prayers, right? I know Gertrude was in the, the first service and she got some health stuff going on in her life. And uh, I know Hart and Caroline is here and I, don't, I haven't heard about her mom lately but, but she needs our prayers right for sure. So we need to continue to do that. And uh, there's all kinds of different needs in our families. I know, I know there's one situation in my family right now that's like it's it's devastating. It is, and, and we just we covet your prayers. And we just gotta continue to believe God and trust them and ask them to to touch and minister and heal. And in a little bit we're gonna take communion, but I still think it should be an easy transition to make God's house a house of prayer. Right? And so, uh, Paul, I see you sitting there, and, and I'm going to get you to pray, if you would. And uh, Paul, you don't want remember at all. But what faith is that we would all agree with Paul and say, God, what he prays, we just stand with him and believe that you're going to touch. Now, I may not have mentioned something that you're going through this morning, but guys, that like it's not limited to that. What it's limited to is a limitless God. That he's able to touch all of us, each of us. And so, Paul, would you lead us in a prayer? Thank you, Jesus. Father, at times like this, I think you stop us and give us some quiet time to think, dear God, about mm -hmm. really how lucky we are. We think God of countries where if you've got the virus, you can't even go to the hospital. Mm. Such as places like Africa, Lord. You just suffer and you die. Jeez. There's other things, oh God, that we should stop and we should think. Mm. You know, just give us a chance to be with our families more, to draw closer to our family. Dear God, for our hearts to soften toward Amen. All those elderly people, God, who Thank you, really Jesus. never thought of before. Amen. That they are the ones, oh God, who are suffering the worst during this. Oh God, we just stop thinking negative and start thinking positive when mm. things happen, God. And I I know, God, that you can take our mind there if we just let ourselves. It's a chance for us, God, to be alone with our family. Jesus. To do things we don't normally do. To go walking together, to talk more together, to be with each other, God. And we just thank you for those things. And you slowed us down. Dear God, everybody is so busy in this world that they don't really have time for you, Lord. Mm -hmm. And when things like this happen, as Christians, we should just draw closer to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Spend Jesus. more time with you. Hallelujah. And even God, you don't mind us asking, why? Mm -hmm. Why is this happening? And, oh, God, you speak of these things in your word. And we just pray, dear God, that we know that as long as we, you tell us to be vigilant, oh, God. In other words, do wear our mask. Do social distance. Do not put ourselves in situations where we might get it. Amen. And then you say, be vigilant, and I will protect you. Mm -hmm. So, oh, God, let us show an example to the rest of the world, dear God, that we are not scared that we believe and we have someone there, God, looking after us. Mm -hmm. We just thank you for everything you've done in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
Melanie's going to do a story for the kids. All right, so Julie and I are having some trouble trying to find a story because I think we've done most of them. So this might be a repeat. I, can't, I don't think I've done this one, but here it goes. So, oh, I'm moving? No, you're not going to talk to me. Okay, so in Daniel, um, there's a story of these uh, three guys. And so uh, I don't know if anybody's ever watched Veggie Tales, but we call them Rack Shack and Benny, but they've got some pretty crazy long names. Anyways, they were living... Um, uh, under this king, Nebuchadnezzar, and he decided that everyone was going to bow down to this golden god that he had created. And so he made it basically a law, like everybody has to bow down, they're going to bow down before this golden god, and if you don't, like there's like some serious consequences. And so these three guys, um, Rack, Shack, and Benny, that's what we're going to call them today, they decided they weren't doing that because they served the one true God and they knew that in his laws you couldn't have a God before him and not to bow down to this God. So he, they decide they're not going to do it. So everybody goes to like this meeting, I guess, that they're all hanging out and it's time to bow down before this God and these three guys just stay standing. They're like, we're not doing this. And so... They get thrown into a fiery furnace because all these like wise men that serve the king are like, listen, like those three guys over there, they're not doing it. So like we got to follow, you know, we need people to realize that they got to take you seriously. So they throw him, the three guys into this fire and all of a sudden like one of the king's um, like men, I'm not sure what they called it back then, wise men, looks into the fire and notices that there's more than three people. He's like, wait a minute, like, I thought we only threw three of them in there, but I see, like, this fourth guy, and, like, he's pretty bright, but, like, they're not burning, so, like, what's going on? And so, they take them out, and they explain that, like, Jesus saved them from the fire, and Nebuchadnezzar is like, oh my goodness, like, this is crazy, so, like, he decides that now it's not a rule to bow in front of these gods. So where am I going with this? Because, like, it's not a rule right now. Nobody's going to get thrown in the fire. But how many of you kids know that sometimes school can be like a fire? And sometimes we're, our friends want us to do things that we, necess we know isn't what we should be doing because we're children of God. And so we might not get thrown into the fire, but we might get thrown in some pretty deep water or get in some pretty big trouble at home if our parents find out that we've done something that we're not supposed to do. So even though God is here to protect you, we need to make sure that we're standing up for ourselves and not doing things that our friends want us to do. So everybody else was bowing before this big golden God, but they were wise enough to say, my God is bigger, and if, if there's a consequence to me not doing what all my friends are doing, I'm going to trust that God is going to protect me. So as kids, we need to realize, and I say we, but like you guys, like I go to school too, but I'm an adult. So, but still, like as kids, you guys need to realize that even when your friends might say, you know what, you're not cool, you didn't do what we wanted you to do, God is protecting you and he's going to take care of you and that's more important than what our friends think, right? So I'm going to say a quick word of prayer and then um, I might sing downstairs. All right, so dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for all the kids that are joining us, both in service and online. God, I pray that when they're in school, God, I know peer pressure is so big and so strong these days, but God, I just pray that you would remind them each and every day that making the right choice for you is so important. And God, that you would just bless them each and every time that they make that choice to stand for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good story. Good story. We tried a mic a little earlier, and I don't know what happened to it, but anyway, we'll get it working. Uh, we ran into some problems with wires, and if you're watching us online, I don't know what the feed is like, but we'll look at that uh, later. And so were you taking the kids? I, I wanted to go down for a snack. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Anyway, if you have your Bibles... Turn to Psalm 127, and uh, what I would like to do today, 
This is the third time I've done this in the last little while. Last week would have been the first time that I let you know that I was doing it. But so what I've done uh, for three times now is I've done, I've brought my personal devotion to the church. And the reason that I did it is because I'm a extreme extrovert. And so what that means is when I walk into a place like Canadian Tire, I can't, I don't know anywhere else that I walk into. But anyway, I, I dialogue with people, right? Matter of fact, you can, and if my neighbors watch this, I can assure you that when my neighbors come outside and I'm outside, we carry on all kinds of conversations. And, and um, simply because I, Denise would get her energy from settling down, locking our front door, and crashing on the couch, where I would probably get my energy from interacting with people. And so, uh, this is not been an easy time. The reason that I'm bringing my devotions to you is because I believe that the Lord wants to speak to you. Right? And you could probably bring that back and say, in your mind right now, God wants to speak to me. You need to know that. You can say that in your mind, that the Lord wants to speak. And so this verse also has been part of what I'm reading. And uh, before I read it, I think there's only two Psalms that's connected to Solomon. 127, the one we're going to do, and 27. And so, if uh, in the life of Roger Merch, and I believe, so you know, should be the life of every Christian, right? Is that Bible reading and Bible waiting is vitally important to me. Simply because for my physical body, I have food. And I also think, which for years now, every year I've done something for my soul. Whether I went on a conference, but I've, I've, I've made sure that things are okay. If you've been through some of the things that I've been through, in the sense of failures and, and stumbling and crashing and all that stuff, you would see the importance of making sure that your soul is healthy. And so, so let me, let's read it. And because it's connected to Solomon, I'm going to uh, point it toward God building the church. So if you have your Bibles, verses 127, it says, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. For a long time, men have had their ends into trying to build the church. In the sense of um, almost uh, cutting out Christians, almost like you would cut out a cookie out of a cookie sheet. And, and, and placing on their lives beliefs and, and religion and tradition and legalism upon them. And so this morning, when I started to read this text a few weeks ago, I thought, hey, in the New Testament, it says this. Jesus said it. I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so when I was reading that, Knowing that the two Psalms were connected to Solomon, I had a feeling that God wanted to build something into your life. 
that God cares about us. That another text that came in my mind as I was reading this one is that we are the Lord's workmanship. His hands are making us, plying us. He's developing us. He's maturing us. And so often, as you can see, the things that we take in really is what we give out. I can show you many people that are dabbling in sin just by what I see come out of them. And so often, it's got nothing to do with Christian principles or concepts or precepts of Scripture. But they've learned to develop a language that sounds Christian, but it's far from it. So what am I saying today? I'm not, I'm not telling you that you've got to conduct your order according to a pastor. I want you to hear that. I'm saying the Lord wants to do something in your life. If he's building the house, not only individually in this text, look at what text 2 says, unless the Lord guards a city. Like, I don't know if you know this or not, and it's a good question for you to ask the Lord. Right? God, what are you doing in Prescott? Because I believe with all my heart that God is at work in Prescott. I'm, I'm not talking in the church right now or some kind of a service or some music and a sermon. What I'm talking is that I believe that God is doing something in our town. And I'm not convinced that we know that he's doing anything. But he's at work. And what does that look like? So you need to come to the conclusion that, listen, we can labor in vain trying to do. What I've heard now for a lot of years, God, we're doing this. Would you bless it? I think I would like to change the thinking a little bit. It helped me think a little bit different. God is constructing something. It is time for me to come alongside, not to get my stuff blessed, but to help him with his labor. Because God is at work. And he's at work not only in my individual life, but he's at work. And so during this time where a, an extreme extrovert cannot like release some of the things that need to be released in my life to help me function and everything, I have learned that in the quietness of a moment, God is doing something miraculous in Roger. And um, you might think I'm a better person. And I, to be honest, I, I'm actually, I've got to the place that I'm fine with that. Like, like, really, really, when I touch down in glory and the Lord says, well done, he's not going to say because this one thought you did good or that one thought you did. It's going to be from his perspective. So let God speak into your life. Let him build something. He wants to build and it won't be in vain. It's funny, uh, it'd soon be my birthday, like my spiritual birthday. Uh, October, the, uh, October the 4th will be my uh, birthday. And, and, and uh, I don't know how many years ago, it's over 30 years ago now. I can remember the first time I came in and, and, uh, and uh, the first thing that happened to me is uh, somebody took away my jean jacket. And uh, oh boy, did I, I, I just... It, it wasn't a God, but I liked it a lot, and I wore it a lot. And uh, But they they put me in a suit, and, and in my suit there was a little puff right here. You know, uh, and it matched my socks that they bought me. <laughs> and, uh, can I tell you something? You, you need to read your Bible, but God don't dwell in buildings. Mm -hmm. Your New Testament says that. 
If you come to church this morning thinking that you were going to find God, then you probably flunked the test. God dwells in us, vessels of clay. It's not that he can't be here. It's not that he don't dwell everywhere. It's not that he's not all places at once. God is desiring deeply, and in my personal devotions, just reading this text, I believe with all of my heart that God don't only want to do a, a, a work in your life, but he wants to do a work outside of your life in your community. Okay, let's read another part of the text to see what else God said to me as I was reading it. Because I think he wants to talk to you like this too. I want you to know that. Hey, can I say this? Now we're live. It is time for the church to take back meditation. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I'm not telling you to sit in some room and hum something to try to figure out who you are. What I am actually telling you to do is find the text or two or three, meditate up on it until the Lord speaks to the innermost parts of your soul. Let me push the point a long ways. I shouldn't because we're streaming. It is time for the Christian culture to take back spirituality. Do you know that most of our friends right now, if they want a spiritual experience, they won't come here? That saddens my heart. Because one could have a beautiful experience with the supreme being and divine person of the universe who sits on a throne, who cares for everyone equally. And so it's so important. Let me get to the second one because I could preach forever. I knew God is. Hey, listen to this one. I, this one stood out to me because I get up early in the morning and it says, in vain, in vain, and maybe this is why it spoke to me, it is in vain for you to rise up early. Right? Which that really like, or to retire late. But I don't think it was speaking to that, to eat the bread of painful labor. For he gives to his beloved even in his sleep. I, I want to I talk to you about something. Because I, I, let, me, let me connect it with the New Testament. Jesus said this, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And so I want you to know that for years I've strived. I've, I've just, right? But I, I, wanna, I want us to settle in and just trust that God is at work in our lives. But now I want you to see something because so often, we, even within our culture, we think that the call of Jesus is that we would sit idle somewhere. That what I'm saying this morning is, hey, let's do nothing and trust God to do everything. Uh, wrong answer. Even the call that Jesus made in the New Testament, he says in that, take my yoke. Take my burden. And so he don't call us into idleness. He actually calls us into labor, but he calls us out of rest. That we need to be to understand the contentment of just resting in the Lord. And out of that rest, I asked the question in the first service. I won't have to ask it in this one. How many are looking forward to the weekend? And um, Just to be transparent, many weekends I do. But I think if we could really learn the concept of coming into God's house today, gathering together like we did, 
and really understand that as far as we can push into his presence, the deeper our rest will become. And even today, so let's say that this is the Sabbath. Let's say that this is the Lord's day. Oh, well, Roger, you don't understand that every day is the Lord's. Okay, I do. Well, Roger, you don't understand that this is really not the church, right? This building. Oh, I understand it all. But what I am saying today is we ought to take a day and rest in the Lord and enjoy his presence. I'm telling you that if you listen to me today and you take the day, not that you would take away anything from your life, but enjoy the presence of God, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday will go a lot better for you. I'm telling you. It will. It's healthier living. Start with rest. Like what he's teaching us is to come out of rest. Hey, let's deal with the final thing that really stuck out to me in this passage. So verse 3 took a twist. Like it was a weird twist for a while. And I really had to seek the Lord and say, what are you saying here? Like this is good that you're going to build a house. This is good that I need to rest. But I need to labor. I need to work. Right? Our labor what, is not in vain in the Lord. And so we just don't sit idle. We do stuff for God. I would actually call them the works of repentance. We don't get repentance because we've done them. Because we've repented and God transformed our lives, we just want to do something for him. It's not a merit to try to get me somewhere. It's a work because of all that he's done in my life. I just want to serve him. I want to be his servant. I, come on. I want to be his servant. Hear me again. Just in case it's not ringing clear in your heart. We Christians should want to be the Lord's servant. We should. Hey, last one. Be old children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the wound is a reward. How many parents will say amen to it? Amen. Oh, there's a few. <laughs> like heralds in the end of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. How blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. I like that simply because in the next little while I'll be crossbow hunting and, and so and I'll have my quiver with me and all that stuff. But, I don't think Denise wants any more kids, so that's a different context, right? <laughs> How blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. And so, guys, I just want to finish with this. And I want you to get the idea of what I'm doing. What I'm saying to you is, I didn't listen to a podcast. I didn't read this out of a manual. I don't follow a date-to-date -date devotional. I want you to catch this. I pick up the pure, raw word of God. And when I read it, I ask him, speak to me about the passage. I've not read a commentary on this passage or last week's or the weeks before. I'm not trying to develop a sermon on it. I've simply read it and I've asked the Lord, help me with this text so people can see that you want to speak. Now let me set the rules straight. My personal biblical opinion is that nobody is more important than anybody. That I don't have an in because I've, I've, I've uh, said yes to a call. Pastors don't have something more because they stand at the front. I think we are all children of God. Each and every one of us. And he wants to speak to us all. But you know what he said to me about this one? 
If I build the church and you come at it from the perspective of rest, there will be reproduction. See, for too long, men have been trying to grow it. For too, for too long that we've been trying to, 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 to reach in such a way that, well, I'm telling you that if God builds the house, the, the labor is not in vain. If we come at it from the perspective of rest rather than ownership, then I'm telling you that there's contentment, not complacement. And then God will just, we'll just see reproductivity. And in this passage, Jesus said that the church would be fruitful, right? That we will bear fruit, that we will see people come to God. And, and I, listen, if, if, if the church, if the church of Jesus Christ would sharpen their hearing. Guys, this might be true of this room. It would be too much for me to ask. When's the last time that God spoke to you? That might be too personal. It, it, might be, it might be too much for me to ask, when is the last time that you opened the Bible? Right? It, it, it might be too personal. It, 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 it might be too personal. For, for me to ask, when is the last time that you took some time and you just meditated upon God's word? Roger, we're 2,000 years away from when Jesus come. Guys, how many people want to be like Jesus? Okay, so let me, let me tell you a little bit about Jesus. He was probably lonely. Oh, you, we, don't want to, we don't want to give that. Okay, so let me tell you another thing about Jesus. The guy suffered. No, no, okay, so let me ask again. Let me just a quick question. How many people want to be like Jesus? Right? Like it's huge, right? So, 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 we, we, listen, I'm telling you that Roger March have suffered through this time. I've not reacted. Right? I, 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 I there has been times that I probably, I, I might have wanted to smack someone with the Bible. Right? Just to straighten them up a little. But I'm telling you that God can get you through. Somebody should say amen. 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 Now receive that today. Jake, you want to come back up? So in a few moments, we need to get one more communion there, Denise. In a few moments, we're going to take communion. And... Um, you're going to have to go pick up for your family, and you can pick up a bunch of them, and they're not easy to open, okay? So the way that it works, if I could see, there's a clear part in the top that you pull off first. And so as Jake begins to sing, why don't you go back and get a communion for your family? Don't open them yet. They're difficult. If you're going to open them, you've got to open the clear one first. If it's purple, don't open it. There's a clear one on top that you open first. Let's sing this song.
We know that in his stripes, and he took many of them, right, was broken, or, or, or was, he, he, was, he was whipped and, and beaten for us. And it secures our healing. Before he died on the cross, he secured that we would be physically healed, mentally, whatever we're going through, that Jesus would bring healing to our life. So Jesus, the night that you was betrayed, you took bread, you gave thanks, you broke it, and you handed it out. Lord, we thank you for what you've done as we partake together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know if Jen watches the second service or not, but like her gluten-free bread that we've been eating for a while tastes better. <laughs> You'll love me for that one. <laughs> I'm glad it was. It didn't taste good for your mouths, guys, because I've been drinking grape juice now for 35 years, and I hate it every time. <laughs> right? Like, this is the worst tasting juice in the world. So, uh, But I, I, I don't like it that communion would bring a bad taste to our mouths. But I want you to know that what Jesus Christ done. It says, secondly, he took the cup. It says he lifted it up. Right? And he said to them, this is my body, my blood, the new covenant. I'm doing this for you. Let's partake together. That's not what I would wash down styrofoam with. It's great. <laughs> That's terrible. I'm going to have to call a word. May, may your communion experience be remembered what Jesus done versus remember what you partake. <laughs> right? So, Father, we thank you for today. We ask you to go with us today. Lord, no disrespect. All honor. You, 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 did, you told us to do this. I'm not even sure the setting that we're doing it in with that little cup, with that cracker. But, Lord, you've told us that we are to come together, break bread together, have communion together, and remember what you've done. Jesus, we thank you for what you've done. In Christ's name, amen. God bless you as you go today.